Hello everybody. A lot of time passed since my last video, but today I have the chance to benchmark and highlight the differences of the quite new Surface 7 Plus against the Vanilla 7 I reviewed some months ago. The only thing externally distinguishing the two is basically the replaceable SSD slot behind the hinge. That's all. All the rest of differences rely on the internals. Basically, the processor. And it's a huge bump. Oh, and before speaking of differences, let me show you the bumper cover I chose to avoid any future cracks of the screen. The type cover is definitely not enough to protect from accidental damage. Later, to explain it better. Later, I'll explain why I could get my hands on the newer version. The first comparison is with two 3D Mark benchmarks suited for integrated graphics. It scores very well and interestingly, on battery, if you choose best performance, you don't leave anything on the table basically. I could score higher in battery than powered at the wall if the latter run is a repeated test where the chassis got warmer and warmer. The two tests are Wildlife and Night Raid. You can see scores on battery and at the wall here and check those online by using the URL shown in the screenshots if you want. I had the Surface 7 i5 and now rock the Surface 7 Plus i5. Former was Ice Lake i5 and this one Tiger Lake i5. Both are quad core 8 threads processors, but the 10 nanometer process is so refined in the latest iteration that Intel is able to unleash extreme more frequencies over the processor. Also, the integrated GPU has been totally rebumped now rocking Intel Xe graphics, almost doubling the graphics performance. And that's very important when you don't have any more help, no dedicated GPU here. The processor also has a massive L2 cache, 5 MB total versus 1 MB total, a larger L3 cache, 8 MB shared versus 6 MB shared, and that fasten any process considerably, especially gaming, which relies on fast response times.
After the 3D Mark tests, it's time for the never-ending Team Fortress 2. It's been installed in the micro SD, but other than slow loading, it's definitely fine. And a massive improvement over the Ice Lake Surface 7 i5. Just mind you, I had to disable full screen optimization for the HL2.exe in order to avoid Windows 11, the OS coming pre installed with this new machine, to actually lower to 30 FPS. It acted this way anyway, even if powered at the wall. No game mode turned on, or any VSync, or FPS max in TF2 console. When finally disabled those optimizations, you can see an empty map allows TF2 to run at 9020 by 1200 at more than 100 FPS, way more. In normal casual games, it lowers considerably, but stays always above 60 FPS. The screen refresh rate. I think Ice Lake couldn't handle with this high resolution, and I had to go HD ready resolutions to handle the same frame rate. So it's a massive win for Tiger Lake. About I could get the hands on the newer product, it's sold by luck. I mean, at first it was unluck, because someone in my house let the device drop from a table on its corner. And yeah, despite the screen being covered by the type cover, you can see the heat easily deforms the alloy of the chassis and the screen is condemned to break. So no, type cover can't handle table height drops. You better rely on a proper cover, like I did with the newer model. So, back to the story. I sent a broken surface for out of warranty repair to Amazon. After a month, the device was declared lost. Yeah, I mean, the postal service had brought it in a different Amazon location, not the one where they get repaired. So, I don't know. They didn't know where it was. Full refund. 7.99 euros. One week before Black Friday, I had the money back. And you know the cost of the newer model during Black Friday at Amazon? $7.99. So in the end my upgrade did not cost anything. Nada. Niente. Can't complain. Literally bought the cover faster than light because such luck can't happen again, I am sure. TF2 with high settings at stable 60 FPS is very pleasant. Except for dumb and kickable bots. But that's another story. Finally, after TF2, let's check fast how Minecraft Bedrock Edition, the version from the Microsoft Store, goes. Very smooth. Battery smooth, and that's it at the native resolution of the panel, way higher than Full HD. Of course, keyboard and pen are fully compatible between 7 and 7 Plus, so the ones you see here are the ones bought with the Ice Lake version in the past.
Chef Kiss. Hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.